Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. So with macOS Catalina you no longer have an iTunes app on your Mac. So how do you do an old fashioned sync of your music and other data from your Mac to your iPhone? MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. That's where you can read about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content. So this was like the number one question I've been asked about the update to Catalina. How can you sync your iPhone from your Mac if you don't have iTunes? Well the answer is pretty simple. All of those functions have been moved from iTunes and are now just available in the Finder. It actually looks pretty much the same and works pretty much the same. You just go to a different place. So when you first connect to your iPhone the natural thing to do would be to go to iTunes. But iTunes isn't there. Instead you've got the Music app which looks a lot like iTunes. And sure enough if you launch it and your iPhone is connected you'll see it appear on the left under Devices just as before. But if you click on it all you're going to get here is a list of things. In this case I have nothing on this iPhone. All you're going to see is maybe some voice memos and some other things. And you're not going to see any of the regular settings. No tabs up here for syncing or anything. Just a Sync Settings button. Now if you click that you're going to end up in the same place where I'm about to show you. But let me show you the regular way to get there. Let's forget about the Music app and go into Finder instead. So we're in Finder and we'll create a new Finder window. And if you look on the left under Locations you should see your phone. So there it is. Now let's make this window a little bit bigger. Now this is going to look very familiar because this is what it looked like in iTunes previous to macOS Catalina. You had these tabs at the top with General and Music, Movies, etc. And you could switch to any of these and the insides of them look just like they did in iTunes. So under General here it's going to give you some information about your iPhone or iPad. You can check for an update. You can use restore functions. You've got the same backup buttons here so you can manually back up to your Mac if you want. You've got some other options here at the bottom as well. Then you could switch to one of these media tabs like for instance Music. And here you can turn on Sync Music and if I turn that on what it allow me to do is sync my entire music library just as before or selected artists, albums, genres, and playlists and it will list those down here so I can check them off. I can switch to albums, genres, or playlists and I can do any combination of those. I can also include videos or automatically fill free space with songs. These are things we had before in iTunes but now they're in the Finder. The same is true for the rest of the Media tabs here. You can set these to sync just as you could before but now you're just doing it in the Finder. And after you've made changes to all of these tabs, set it the way you want, you can hit Apply and it will sync everything to your iPhone or iPad just as it did before in iTunes. You also have a Files tab here which is the same as what you had before. It lists all the apps that have file space and you can actually see the files in them and if you want to get a file from it you can actually drag out of here into the desktop and save that file. You can also add files in here as well. So for instance if I were to open up another Finder window here and I wanted to drag a compatible document to one of these folders I could. You can see how the plus button is there. Under Info this is where you sync things like contacts and calendars. You turn on a syncing for that and you would apply. And of course this is if you're not using iCloud to sync these things already which is something you definitely should be doing in 2019. Under Photos you have a lot of options just as before. You've got Sync Photos to your device from and you can choose a folder or you can do it from the Photos app. If you do it from the Photos app you can select Albums, Include Only Favorites, do all the things that you did before. Of course if you're using iCloud Photos you wouldn't want to sync with this. So you would just have it turned off. Now you may not use the old Sync function here to sync your libraries from the music app and movies and all of that. What you may actually use is manual syncing. So you can manually manage music, movies, and TV shows just as you could before. All you need to do is turn this on and then you apply. And of course as many of you know if you've used this function before it will remove all the stuff that you've had if you've previously synced in some way. But once you have Manually Manage on now you can actually go back to the Music app. And now that that is on when you go to Devices here 
you can actually drag and drop things into here. So for instance let's go back into one of my library views here. I can take a song and I can drag it and now you see I can actually add it here into my device. And when I go to it I'll see it's synced there. So this is the same manually managed feature you had before. It's just that now you have to enable it in the Finder and then once it's enabled in the Finder you can use it in the Music App to manually move songs to your iPad. Now you may have noticed that tones or ringtones are missing from here. So you can no longer sync tones from the Music App to the iPhone or iPad. But you see the Music App just doesn't handle ringtones anymore. So it makes sense. However you can still get custom ringtones to your device. So I have that manually manage music, movies, and TV shows turned on. So now when I go into the Music app I can drag and drop things in there. And I can drag and drop from the Finder. Here I've got a M4R ringtone. I can drag and drop that in. You won't see it appear here. But I've observed it appears in your Settings Sounds list. And you'll actually have that ringtone available. You could also just do this using iCloud Drive to bring the file over and the GarageBand app on your iPhone or iPad to convert it to a ringtone. So you still have the ability to create your own ringtones from just about any audio source. Now keep in mind for most of us we don't use an old fashioned sync anymore iCloud takes care of all of this. If you use iCloud Photos, iCloud Drive, use iCloud for Contacts, Calendars, Reminders, all of that, then it automatically syncs with your phone. New users may not even realize there's a way to sync from a Mac to an iPhone. It all just happens automatically, wirelessly, through the cloud. So what about iPods? What if you have an old iPod lying around? Well guess what? This works great with those as well. So here I've got a really old 6th generation iPod Nano, one of these little square ones. It almost looked like you could wear it as a watch. And it shows up here in the Finder just as the iPhone and iPad do. I've got uh, the ability to sync music, podcasts, audiobooks, and photos. Seems to work just fine. It actually even shows up a second time in the Finder because I believe this had a little function on it where you could store files so you can get to it that way. In the Music app as well it appears there. You could see it. I could see what music is actually on this. And if I set it to manual sync I can drag and drop stuff into this iPod. So it works fine with this one. And here's an even older 5th generation iPod Nano. These were great because they actually had this little video camera on the back and you can record 64480 video with them. Really cool. And you can watch videos too. And you can see here I've got the ability to sync music, movies, TV shows, and podcasts, audiobook, and photos. So great deal there. Uh, you also can see directly on the drive itself just like before. And in the Music app you could see it appear there as well. I don't have anything on it. But I could uh, you know, drag and drop things into it if I had it set to manual syncing for this little beauty. So you can still pretty much do everything that you need with Catalina using the Finder instead of iTunes. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.